Shopping just got a whole lot better with GoTime Bank. GoTime Bank gives you reward points when you shop, and points can be redeemed as cash with a simple tap in the GoTime Bank app. Not only does GoTime Bank offer interest rates 50 times higher than traditional banks, but it also provides three free bank transfers to other banks per week. With GoTime Bank, you can send, shop, and save with ease and confidence knowing that your money is safe and secure. Download the GoTime Bank app today and open an account in less than five minutes. Visit www.gotime.com.ph for more details. Podcast Network Asia. This episode may include topics, references, or discussions around sexual assault, domestic violence, stalking, physical violence, or subject matters that may be disturbing to some of our listeners. We do acknowledge that this content may be difficult. We also encourage you to care for your safety and well-being. Shocking, sad, revealing, and deeply researched. PH Murder Stories podcast covers the true account of infamous killings and true crime stories from the Philippines. There's no such thing as questions, just hidden answers. Stay tuned as we revisit the inconceivable crimes that exist. Some listeners may find the following content of PH Murder Stories highly disturbing due to its graphic nature. PH Murder Stories does not condone nor promote violence of all sorts. Viewer discretion is advised. On November 18, 2009, one of the most controversial road rage incidents and manhunts of the 2000s happened in the Philippines. The victim in this case was Renato Ebarle Jr., a son of a former presidential chief of staff, Renato Ebarle Sr. He was shot and killed by Jason Ivler a nephew of singer and songwriter Freddy Aguilar. Witnesses saw the suspect go over to his victim's car and shoot him multiple times after a traffic altercation at the corner of Bonnie Serrano Street and Ortigas Avenue, Quezon City. With various witnesses pinpointing Jason Ivler as the killer, he became one of the most wanted criminals at the time and what others may argue was one of the most infamous manhunts in the Philippines. Authorities and news outlets began their due diligence in figuring out who Jason Ivler was, and what they found out was shockingly outrageous. You are listening to the PH Murder Stories Podcast, and this is the ninth episode of Season 3. Ilang beses sinalughog ng otoridad ang tatlong bahay ni Marlene Aguilar sa Blue Ridge Subdivision sa Quezon City para ihain ang warrant of arrest ni Ivler. January 2010, isang tip ang natanggap ng NBI na hindi umalis ng bahay kailanman si Ivler. Madaling araw ng January 18, sinalakay ng NBI ang bahay na ito sa Blue Ridge sa Quezon City. Ayon kay Marlene Aguilar, wala doon ang anak niya. Wala namang kayong search warrant. Nandiyan na siya sa edya na kayo sa kwarto kung may mga hawa kayong balin. Tuloy pa rin sa paghalughog ng mga kwarto nang umalingaw-ngawang isang putok. Lumabas si Jason na nagtago sa ilalim ng hagdan. Namaril habang pasugod sa kwarto na kinaroroonan ng ilang operatiba ng NBI at news team. Pero 
Sugod na tamaan si Jason na maoperatiba bago pa man niya napasok ang kwarto. Makikitang nakabandolier si Jason na puno ng bala. Agad siyang isinugod sa ospital. Pinusasan din si Marlene at inaresto. It was not Jason Ivler's first run-in with the law. In August 2004, he was involved in an accident that killed former congressman and presidential technical assistant Nestor Ponce Jr. and injured his wife, Evangeline Ponce. Authorities filed two charges against Jason Ivler before the Pasig City Regional Trial Court. First, he was charged with reckless imprudence, resulting in homicide and damage to property for Nestor Ponce's death and wreckage of his vehicle. Second, he was charged with reckless imprudence, resulting in slight physical injuries for Evangeline Ponce. On September 7, 2004, Ivler pleaded guilty to the second charge. He was later convicted and received the penalty of public censure. Ivler then moved for the dismissal of the first charge and was out on bail. Renato Victor Ebarle Jr. was only 27 years old when Jason Ivler shot his body multiple times, which caused his death. Despite being a son of a high-ranking government official, Renato Jr. chose a career path in human resource management, serving as a recruitment manager of the Hotel Peninsula Manila before his tragic death. According to his relatives and friends, Renato Jr. was a kind and humble man who did not let others see him as a son of a powerful man who worked in the president's office. When the people who knew him learned about his tragic death, they could not believe it because Renato Jr. did not seem like someone who would be involved in something so senseless. As for Jason Ivler, some would say he is the complete opposite of Renato Jr.'s attitude and personality. Ivler also came from a privileged family. He is the son of Marlene Aguilar, the brother of Freddy Aguilar, a famous singer and songwriter in the Philippines. Jason Ivler was born in Massachusetts, USA, and was the firstborn of Marlene and Robert Ivler. According to Marlene, her son was only two and a half years old when he lost his father. She claimed that her husband, whom she met in the Philippines before Jason was born, was killed by a hitman at a hotel in Bangkok, Thailand. As Jason was growing up, his mother insisted that he treat her with gentleness. Marlene also highlighted that her son was a dean's lister at the Hawaii Pacific University, where he studied AB psychology. Marlene discussed in an ABS-CBN article from 2010 that after her son's father died, she had a few former lovers, such as a Colombian arms dealer and a wanted criminal who is now serving time in the United Kingdom. Marlene later remarried Stephen Pollard, an economist who worked as a consultant for the Asian Development Bank. At the time of Jason Ivler's accident in 2004, he was driving his stepfather's Toyota Land Cruiser, which bore diplomatic plates. He crashed into the car owned by former presidential undersecretary for resettlement, Nestor Ponce Jr., and his wife, Evangeline. Ivler was out on bail for the charges filed against him for the death of Nestor Ponce. But he had another run-in with the law after attempting to escape the country despite a pending criminal case. He was arrested in Zamboanga City while trying to catch a ferry bound for Malaysia, which prompted the Bureau of Immigration to issue an order to prevent him from leaving the country. In 2007, Ivler was shockingly allowed to join the U.S. Army despite a pending arrest warrant in the Philippines. Ivler served as an infantryman with the 25th Infantry Division in Hawaii with the rank of specialist. A year later, he was discharged under honorable conditions. In 2009, Ivler's luck from evading prison time would eventually run out after shooting Renato Ebarle Jr from what many observers believe was a case of road rage. Marlene Aguilar absurdly claimed that the Central Intelligence Agency was behind everything happening to her family due to her disobedience to comply with the U.S. government. According to Marlene, her son was framed by a group of powerful Americans out to punish her, partly, she says, 
for her provocative essays that blame much of the world's carnage and other woes on the USA, and partly for refusing to obey mysterious biddings. There was also an instance when she called Pope Francis Pope Satan, proving to many people her way of voicing opinions is so different from the rest of us. For two months, the authorities issued a prioritized search for Jason Ivler. They also had mishaps along the way, specifically the arrest of an OFW in Qatar after being mistaken for Jason Ivler. On January 18, 2010, exactly two months after the road rage killing of Renato Ebarle Jr., the operatives from the National Bureau of Investigation finally caught Jason Ivler after a bloody altercation at his family's home in Blue Ridge A Subdivision in Quezon City. Jason Ivler's capture was challenging for the authorities. The suspect was heavily protected by his mother, Marlene Aguilar who undoubtedly obstructed the ongoing investigation with her antics by misleading the authorities. Initially, aside from Marlene's outlandish claims, she also tried to pin the murder on Mark Hauser, the Ivler family's bodyguard. Hauser denied all allegations while the authorities promptly dismissed Marlene's unsubstantiated claims. As witnesses of the Ibarle Jr. killing were 100% sure that the real culprit was Jason Ivler. Regardless, the NBI's persistence overcame Marlene's unlawful stunts to protect her road rage killer son. They captured Jason Ivler hiding in an underground room at their residence. Amid the arrest of Jason Ivler, Marlene Aguilar was hysterical, seemingly trying to deceive the authorities, but as soon as they figured out the fugitive's whereabouts in the house, all hell broke loose. The road rage killer tried to put up a fight. He had a baby armalite and a bandolier shooting toward the NBI operatives, hitting two men. Eventually, the authorities were able to apprehend Jason Ivler after shooting him in the right shoulder and left upper abdomen. Afterward, he was rushed to the Quirino Memorial Medical Center for treatment. According to medical reports, a bullet went through Jason Ivler's abdomen and pierced his large intestine, which meant he had to undergo surgery to remove his spleen. On April 6, 2010, after recovering from his injury, Jason Ivler was finally incarcerated at the Quezon City Jail Annex. Meanwhile, Marlene Aguilar's antics did not stop. She challenged Renato Ebarle Sr., the father of Jason Ivler's victim, to a fistfight after the latter exposed Jason Ivler of having a lavish lifestyle during his time at the Quezon City Jail Annex. Inalis na sa pwesto ang warden ng Quezon City Jail na si Senior Superintendent Hernan Grande. Ito'y para maging patas ang investigasyon ng Bureau of Jail Management and Penology sa umano'y special treatment na natatanggap ni Jason Ivler. Kung nagpasok nga talaga ng alak sa loob at nagkaroon ng inuman, hmm. nagpasok ng mga babae, yun ang magiging violation niya. Ininspeksyon ni BJMP Director Dial ang selda ni Ivler. Ito'y bunsod ng mga larawan at video na lumabas na umano'y lumalabag sa kalakaran sa kulungan sa pagpaparty at pagdadala umano ng babae sa selda. Isang araw matapos lumabas ang report sa ABS-CBN, humarap sa media si Ivler at itinanggi na espesyal ang pagtrato sa kanya. Ah, walang katotohanan yan. Uh, lahat ng inmates dito may fair and equal treatment. Pinapalabas nila na dito kinuha yung picture pero sa laya pa yun, bago pa ako nagkaroon ng kaso. At ang mga babaeng nakuna ng litrato, mga pinsa na tagahanga niya. Yung mga fans na naging kakulos ng nanay ko, tumalo din sila dito para makakuha ng autograph. Dinipensahan din niya ang kontrobersyal na pahayag ng ina na kukonsintihin ang anumang gusto niya sa loob ng kulungan. Kung ano man ang binibentang treatment doon, kahit sex pa yon, kung gusto ng anak ko, I'll pay for it. As a loving mother, that is something that she would provide. And uh, are you getting it? No, no. I, uh, I Really, to be honest, I'm too embarrassed by the way my stomach looks right now to want to take my clothes off. Sa kabila nito, kitang kita sa video na kuha sa loob ng selda, na tila inaaya ni Eiler ang sinumang nais makipag-sex sa kanya. I want some birthday sex, okay? I want a 
fuck a very hot stranger that's disease free, okay? I don't even care what your name is, okay? I don't even need to really talk to you, just come here. Kaya naman iginiit ni Undersecretary Renato Ebarle Sr. ama ng napatay umano ni Ibler na imbestigahan ng Quezon City Jail. Ang management natin, na tinatawag na Bureau of Jail Management, ay mukhang practically walang management. Buwelta naman ng ina ni Ibler. Mag-sparring kami dito. Suntukan na lang. Ginamit ng ebidensya ng pamilya Ebarle ang mga litrato at video upang anilay mapabilis ang proseso sa paglipat kay Ibler sa Bikutan Detention Facility. During Jason Ivers' time in the Quezon City Jail Annex, photographs and videos were circulating in public, which featured Jason Ivers partying, drinking booze, and having female guests with his fellow inmates. It caused public outrage as it portrayed that Jason Ivers had VIP treatment in prison. Nonetheless, it resulted in the termination of the Quezon City Jail warden at the time. In an interview with Jessica Soho in State of the Nation, Ebarle Sr. responded to Marlene Aguilar, telling her that she should redirect her anger at her husband, Stephen Pollard, as Ebarle Sr. claimed that Pollard was the one who asked his British bodyguard to tip off the police on Jason Ivers' whereabouts. Jason Ivers was charged with murder, while his mother, Marlene Aguilar, was charged with obstruction of justice for allegedly harboring her son, but was bailed out by her attorney. During the court hearings, there were 58 pieces of evidence against Jason Ivler, including the gun he used to kill Renato Ebarle Jr., which was seized in his residence during his eventual capture. Overwhelming evidence and testimonies disproved Jason Ivler's initial alibi that he was at a birthday party during the time of Ebarle Jr.'s killing. Two police officers at the crime scene, SPO3 Edgar Tiodin and Archie Castillo, testified that they clearly saw Jason Ivler shoot Renato Ebarle Jr. In 2015, the Quezon City Regional Trial Court Branch 84 found Jason Ivler guilty of murder. In its ruling, The court sentenced Jason Ivler to reclusión perpetua, or up to 40 years in prison, and ordered him to pay 9.373 million in damages to the Abarle family. The convicted killer was also ordered to transfer to the new Belibid prison in Montinlupa City from the Quezon City Jail Annex in Camp Bagong Diwa. Jason Ivler tried to appeal his conviction. But the Court of Appeals affirmed the Quezon City Regional Trial Court Branch 84's decision in 2017 and the Supreme Court's in 2019. In addition, the higher court added a huge sum of damages and legal fees to be paid by the suspect to Renato Ebarle Jr.'s family to compensate for the loss of earning capacity of his victim, which both the RTC and CA failed to account for. Jason Ivler was a spoiled brat who killed two people for his recklessness and violent tendencies. He didn't even show any remorse for what he's done. It is good that justice prevailed this time despite Jason Ivler's powerful connection through his uncle, Freddy Aguilar. Being a prominent campaign supporter and jingle songwriter of former president Rodrigo Roa Duterte. Jason Ivler and his family tried so hard to get out of jail But his crime was way too obvious. Not even money and powerful connections could let him get away with it. So to our listeners, especially those of you who are motorists, if you ever have an altercation with another driver in the future, Always remember that it is safer to let peaceful actions prevail because we have no way of telling if there's another Jason Ivler, Orolito Go, or any other motorist with violent tendencies that we might share the same road with. Road rage incidents have gravely affected the country's driving conditions, and we all must do our part to ensure our emotions don't get in the way of making our roads safer and better for our and our family's sake.
Thank you for listening to PH Murder Stories. If you like this episode, give us a five-star rating on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. You can also support our show on Patreon. Any amount you donate would benefit our team to keep doing what we love, which is to provide more true crime episodes for our listeners. Link in the description. For further updates from our show, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at PH Murder Stories. And subscribe to our YouTube channel at PH Murder Stories. The views and opinions expressed by the podcast creators, hosts, and guests do not necessarily reflect the official policy and position of Podcast Network Asia, the hosts of the program, or other programs of the network. Any content provided by the people on the podcast are of their own opinion and are not intended to malign any religion, ethnic group, club, organization, company, individual, or anyone or anything.